Rolling? Are we rolling? Oh boy, have I bitten off a lot for myself today. Um, okay, I am simultaneously making a video and kind of improving on the fly about it and doing a lot of really difficult playing. So uh, follow me around as I get situated here. So here's my idea. Um, chapter three of the 8020 drummer just released. You can see I'm setting up my microphone here. What's up? And uh, so I am going to start doing these more like a podcast. Um, I'm literally just going to hit you with some stuff I'm practicing in the shed and like try to relate it back to the video series and try to make it accessible so that everybody can get something from it. So uh, yeah, that should be easy enough, right? By the way, th this isn't distracting at all, is it? I decided to start recording this um, so I can talk to you kind of as I'm setting up my cameras. So what do we have? We've got the wide angle camera here and he is recording action, action. Um, got the zoom, the zoom recorder. Uh, shout outs, Bill Burr, subliminal. And uh, we've got the Zoom microphone. Zoom mic. Keep this entertaining while I keep talking. So uh, have I practiced this with the mic in front of my face? No, I haven't. How do we think that's going to go? Oh, I don't know. Maybe not super well. Okay, so about now the uh, high resolution audio should be uh, hitting you. How are my levels? Good. Okay. All right, so... Singularly framed, slightly less ADD uh, video podcast um, recording on multiple uh, cameras here. So I am practicing time and I'm getting material together for chapter four of the 8020 drummer. By the way, chapters one and three are like a year's worth of work. Um, and I'm not going to sales pitch you, but. Dude, come on. Like, how much would you spend for a lesson? I mean, not even with Clarence Penn or Greg Hutchinson, but with me, you'd still spend more for a single lesson, like a lot more than you'd spend for the video. Anyway, enough, enough sales pitchiness. I worked super hard on, on them, though. So seriously, like, they're really good. Check them out at the site below. Okay, but chapter three was basic timekeeping. Um, and we covered... Pretty much everything easy that I can cover, and so the only thing left is difficult stuff. So, um, here's the uh, quixotic heavy lift I've taken on myself today. I'm practicing uh, Historicity by VJ Iyer, um, and I'm going to try to relate that back to time. And basically, the idea is. You should practice your micro time as if it's a crazy odd meter that switches directions every few bars. So let's talk about historicity. Um, and it's not important that you remember the time signatures, but historicity has two primary sections. It has a coda, but the two primary sections are uh, there's an A section and a B section, and there's like a little melodic cue to go from one to the other. Point being, um, the A section is one bar of four and a bar of five sixteen. So it's three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a ba ba da ba and a two E and a three E and a four E and a ba da 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 ba ba da da ba da 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 ba. So this is not something you can really get off and expect to rejoin the band in any kind of dignified fashion unless they're super relaxed with it. So I'm practicing this with 16ths and uh, here's what it sounds like. And I will come to the point, believe me. Yeah, just get my metronome going. So this is pretty close to the actual tempo they take. Um, so the groove is just...
Okay, so now I'm going to improv with it a little bit and try to keep the beat straight. Okay, so I think I kept that straight. It doesn't really matter um, what the meter is, but here's my point. If you can do that, then try to play in four. Watch this. One, two, three, four. Okay, and yeah, we'll have to we'll have to finesse this with the zoom mic because it's actually in my way with the ride symbol. But um, so point of this whole exercise is practice even meters with the same intensity and attention to detail as if they're odd meters, and try to practice something in an odd meter. Challenge yourself. Here's another um, interesting thing about that is. Um, when you do bring it back in for the for the close up when you do practice something that's in an odd meter um it's a great way to take your mind off technique like if you've been practicing something technical for a little while like practice an odd meter um and stop thinking about your sequencing and your minimum effective bead and your micro time and your macro time and just try to lock in um, and it's a great way to sort of synthesize all that stuff. And then when you go back to playing in four or three or your regular meters, um, it's going to be more comfortable. Anyway, uh, I have run way long. This is 8020 Drummer Experimental Podcast number one, um, and we are out.